Driving at Home with Avor's housing economist, Claire Losey. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Driving at Home podcast. I am Kalea Youngblood, filling in for Emily, our CEO today. I'm here with Dr. Claire Losey once again. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. How are you? Good, good. I'm excited to jump in this week. We um, had some interesting revelations coming out of the Federal Reserve announcing that it would not hike rates. So tell us about that. What implications does this decision have for the market? So the Federal Reserve met last Tuesday and Wednesday, and Chair Powell announced on Wednesday that the FOMC opted not to hike its federal funds rate. So it will stay at its current target rate, which ranges between 5.25% and 5.5%. Markets really interpreted this news well. The 10-year T-yield continued to decline. That decline started on Monday going into Tuesday, and that continued over the following days in reaction to the news. In essence, the market viewed the news favorably and as a sign that, of course, the Federal Reserve may also choose not to hike rates in December as well. Right now, there's about a 90% probability that the Federal Reserve will maintain its current federal funds rate in December as well. Wow, that's great. And the other news that came out here is that the 10-year Treasury yield declined last week. So can you recap why that happened and what does this mean for mortgage rates? Kind of as we were talking about before, part of the reason for the decline is just the investor's reaction to the news from the Federal Reserve, i.e. that it would be maintaining its current interest rate and just how, um, you know, kind of the effect of that, right? So it's if you maintain the interest rate, it's not going to increase borrowing costs like the mortgage rate, for example, and therefore cause consumers to incur higher costs of borrowing, right? In essence, the market was saying, okay, this is going to leave consumers in a little bit of a more favorable position, right? So that's a good thing for a business more generally. We know that with the 10-year treasuries, prices and yields are inversely related. So anytime the price goes up, the yield falls. And when, of course, price goes up, we know that demand has also risen. So in essence, what we're seeing is that there's been stronger demand over the past several days for 10-year treasuries, again, as investors are seeing that the level of uncertainty in the market has dissipated somewhat with the Fed's announcement of no rate hike, and that there's a little bit more certainty, too, in the market just around the sentiment that the Fed will probably not hike rates in December as well, just given the pace of inflation and where the data is falling on the jobs front as well. So it sounds like we're going to cruise through the end of the year, hoping that they don't hike the rates in December and things will settle out through the remainder of the year and through the holiday. Right. The prevailing sentiment right now in the market is that, as you're saying, Kalea, we'll just maintain the status quo through the end of the year. And what this really means right in our sector, in the housing sector, is that mortgage rates, we may have already seen peak mortgage rates and rates may begin to decline marginally. We saw just a little bit of evidence of that last week, right? So the week prior to last week, mortgage rates averaged 7.79%, according to Freddie Mac. But last week came in at 7.76%, so very marginal decline. But of course, with the decline in the 10-year T-yield that we saw last week, we're expecting that mortgage rates will decline again, probably slightly, but will decline again this week. So depending, again, on where the 10-year T-yield ends up, it's going to really affect mortgage rates definitely will be continuing to keep a close eye on that. For sure. And now it's just such a great time to leverage the buyers to get in, go ahead and close on that house this year. We know that things are settling out and it's still a great time to buy if you've been eyeing that house, considering that there might be some good negotiation opportunities for you out there. And as we've stressed before too, it's important to remember that even given last week's news, the Federal Reserve, 
not hiking rates and the favorable impact on the 10-year T yields, for example, it doesn't necessarily mean that mortgage rates are going to decline substantially, right? So it's important if buyers are lingering, if they're on the fence because they think, oh, mortgage rates are going to fall to the tune of 0.5 percentage points or one percentage point or even two percentage points within the next week or two, it's they would be a little bit mistaken to yeah. to think that they're gonna there's going to be such a significant swing. Yeah. Well that brings us to our weekly stats. Why don't you recap our weekly stats? What can we expect going into next week? We've got market stats coming up soon for October. Give us the rundown. So last week on a week over week basis, we saw an uptick in closed sales, which hovered around 450, and that was an increase of about 20%. Meanwhile, new listings also increased to the tune of about 15%. With respect to leases, we saw essentially that closed leases remained flat, and then new listings declined about 13%. So overall, in the residential sales side, a little bit of an uptick again with respect to stronger activity on the sales front, on new listings, et cetera. But on the leasing side, more so maintaining the status quo and then that a little bit of a retraction, right, in the extent of new listings on a week-over-week basis. And that makes sense considering we closed out October. Um, We all know that last Friday of the month is the day to close. So that does make sense as we started into November. So thank you for that. And then what can we expect next week? I know we have the market stats coming out for October. Is there anything in your crystal ball that we can look at? Or are you pretty set on us maintaining where we are today, thereabout? So I don't think we're going to see any significant shifts from September. Overall, we've seen that the decline in the median sales price has moderated. It's not been nearly as strong as it was in the spring or even the summer months. So I think probably more so just fairly similar to what we saw in September. Okay, great. Well, thanks for joining us again. And thanks for those of you tuning in and getting your weekly update. Wanted to also plug while I have some earballs today, <laughs> eyeballs and earballs, <laughs> is that now we are offering our Austin Business Journal subscription for free to members. Go to abor.com slash abj. It's also on our homepage. That is a free subscription for you, for our members to enjoy and um, use it as a smart reader. There's great opportunities for lead generation and understanding what's going on in our city and surrounding areas. So please take advantage of that. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Claire. Take care, guys.